Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this episode, I'm going to give you fair warning. We're going to be doing something pretty disgusting. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but I will say that, you know, a lot of you know that I am a vegetarian. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I feel like people who are vegetarians or vegans deserve fair warning if there's going to be some brutal clip of an animal being killed. You know, if you're out there and you're, you're eating meat, you know, you should be exposed to that. But for people that don't do that, you know, they, I think they have a right to be forewarned ahead of time. So here's the forewarning for people. If you are the kind of person that doesn't care whether you necessarily have parasites in your intestines, you can completely skip this video. This is not for you. But for anyone that does have some interest as to whether or not you may have a parasite in your uh, intestinal tract or anything like that, maybe you should watch this video, even though it's going to be kind of gross. <laughs> Uh, what we're doing today is a continuation of a series that I have done based on my experiences, adventures if you will, uh, doing human waste composting, humanure composting, taking poop and composting it down for use for something. I've never necessarily recommended and certainly haven't done myself uh, using it on things like say potatoes <laughs> or whatever, but it has been something I've experimented with and a number of people that I've known in the medical field have I don't know, like warned me that that might be kind of dangerous. So I have one of them that has uh, very generously agreed to join me here today to kind of talk me through looking at my own excrement on a microscope to see if I have any pathogenic worms, et cetera, in there. So thank you very much, uh, Hooples, for being here with us. I love your channel. You have great content. I love how you're very level-headed and don't go crazy fear-mongering the audience or anything like that. You're one of my favorite channels. Uh, thank you for being here with me. Well, thanks, Craig. That was very generous of you. Uh, so uh, why don't you let people know kind of like what your background is? Why are you more qualified than I am to, uh, you know, talk about looking through poop? Okay, it's because basically I'm a registered nurse and I'm old. Uh, new registered nurses don't really focus on this stuff. Everything gets sent to the labs. But when I started in the 80s, <clears throat> one of our jobs was to actually examine poop. Um, we would look for various things, and we would pass it on to the doctor if we found it. All right, okay, so you, ha you have a lot of hours looking at poop then? I have spent a lot of time both cleaning poop and looking at poop, probably more time cleaning it. Okay, okay. Well, uh, what I, I'll tell you what I have kind of gotten set up here. I have a microscope, and it's kind of a cool one. I, I bought it recently, you know, maybe in relation to the idea that I might have had a pathogenic is pathogenic even the right word? No, I don't think it is. It's a parasitic is the word I'm looking for. It could be parasitic. It could also be autogenic because you might actually have the infection yourself and you might be fine with it and you might give it to other people. Like, for example, cholera. Ah, all right, all right. Well, there was a little scare at uh, my house recently where, by, like a couple years ago, where someone who was visiting the house a lot uh, gave us a phone call and said, hey, you know, by the way, you know, my roommate had, uh, it was round worm no round, round worms flat worm, I don't know, some kind of like terrible parasite and they, they said like you know my roommate told me so i'm taking this stuff you know you guys may want to you know think about it uh you know there were certain symptoms associated with it uh you know we didn't end up doing that and we didn't end up necessarily going to the doctor uh what i did end up doing is buying this pretty cool microscope so i could check myself uh, for the infection, I figured, you know, for the amount of money I would spend treating and going to doctors and everything, I could pretty much pay for the microscope and then I'd have a microscope at the end of it. So we ended up looking, uh, you know, and didn't find anything. So that, that was pretty cool. But now I've got this microscope and now we're going to use it to check, uh, you know, excrement that, uh, you know, may have potential pathogens from the human waste composting that we've been doing. I took the liberty this morning of preparing a couple of slides, uh, and uh, Hooples, you can tell me whether or not uh, I did these properly. I hope I did them at least somewhat properly. Uh, I have some just some glass slides here, and I took a little uh, smear, or, you know, for people that are big into bagels, maybe a schmear of... <laughs> uh, yeah, a schmear of uh, fecal material, and put it on the slide, and then I took some water, and uh, with a probe, also known as a chopstick, which I washed, and uh, should I reuse the chopstick? Uh, there's actually no reason why you couldn't, uh, but you probably, but you probably won't want to. Yeah, oh, you'll be afraid it'll be for guests. <laughs> uh, I took that and I kind of like uh, swirled it around and I kind of mixed it into kind of like a, it's like a light paint kind of consistency where light can come through. It's sort of translucent. Does that sound like it's a, a decent preparation of a slide? 
That sounds like a decent preparation of a slide. Okay, okay, that sounds great. So now, if you I've want got to get fancy of... about it, you'd make sure you take it from all parts of the uh, the actual feces. Now, when you say part. all parts of the actual feces. So you'd make sure that you were actually taking samples from the, the top and the middle and the insides. Okay, okay. Th this, 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 this part here was the end of the story here. That, that seemed like the most uh, easy uh, time to grab some. Uh, but uh, I guess that would be another pass that I, or you, if you wanted to do it, could do later on. So anyway, I've got two of these, and uh, I'm going to pop them in here. And what I would like to do is, while I'm looking through here, uh, I would love it if you could tell me kind of some of the things that I might be looking for, and maybe some things that I could pick up from looking through here that aren't necessarily even related to parasites. Like, is there anything that I can tell about my general health, you know, when looking, you know, through this stuff? Uh, you know, I'd love it to just, you know, soak in your expertise on this while I kind of look for anything moving and anything that looks like an egg. Am I correct? Uh, sure. Um, one of the things I'd say right off the bat is I'm not an expert scatologist. Uh, scatology is the study of human feces, or feces in general. So you are, I guess you are now going to be Praxis Prepper scatologist. <laughs> well, you, you've got more experience than I do. True, but we don't generally use microscopes uh, for this, so I had to actually fair cop out to actually look up that stuff. Uh, what you need to do first off is you need to do a bowel assessment and you need to look at how often you pass your feces. How often do you normally go? Well, me personally, it's usually once a day. Once a day. Once a day is normal. If you go more than three times a day, that's diarrhea. If you go less than three t uh, every three days, that's classified as constipation. But anything outside your normal pattern is what you should actually be looking for. Now, the other thing is, did it smell? Uh, you know, I, I I always have prided myself uh, that my my feces smells kind of like freshly tilled garden soil. That's absolutely how it should smell. Awesome. Now, th there's two things that will really make uh, bowels stink. This does not apply to children, young babies, but for adults, if it really, really stinks, it's probably amoebic dysentery or you've got a, an upper GI bleed. Oh, well. And you'll know that. I smell. guess I'm, I'm clear of that then. Mm-hmm. All right. I, um, I'm looking through here, and I, I have right. found something that looks, it looks a little round. I'm going to go to a different magnification. Now, one, one thing you can actually see by eye, you can see some of the eggs uh, of some parasites by eye. It's not that common, but you can. You can also see undigested food, not a lot of it, but occasionally, and also a digested medication. So if you've been eating a lot of seeds... Uh, I, uh, I usually eat a lot of seeds, them. but the things the things I'm looking at right here are kind of transparent. Oh, okay. And the, but the, the, there's just one little cluster of them. They're kind of like clustered up. And gosh, I mean, like that sounds like eggs. It could be eggs. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to get exposed to normal parasites, right? There's normal and abnormal, right? So. I wouldn't worry about it too much if there's not vast amounts. And if you've got no other symptoms at all, I really wouldn't worry. Yeah. I, I may have found eggs. That's pretty, uh, yeah. that's pretty well, exciting. Yeah, eggs I mean, or whatever. It's, it's, it's part of the natural environment. There's a lot of stuff in there. Can you see anything alive in there? Well, that's what I'm kind of looking for. And, it, and it's kind of weird. Like, normally when you're looking through a microscope, like, I, you know, one of the other great things about having this microscope is with River, you know, we can explore things. It's great for science and, and learning because we've been doing homeschool. And it's been great for him. And normally, when, when you're looking through the microscope, you're very excitedly looking for something that's moving. <laughs> and I kind of have mixed feelings now because I, I sort of have that instinct where I'm looking for something that might be moving. But at the same time, I definitely don't want to find anything that's moving in here. <laughs> I mean, and so you, far, you may... I have not found anything moving. No, you probably won't because uh, unless it's alive in the bowel itself, anything that goes through the stomach pretty much is going to get killed by the acid. And then oh, okay. the bile salts as well that then get added after that. So there shouldn't really actually be life, life in the poop. Okay. Well, what, what if you did have some kind of like, they, there are certain types of worms that live in the lower intestine oh, and yeah. they uh, yeah, if they'll come out at night. There, yeah. Yeah. So, but, but you would definitely see those if you had those, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Like okay. you'd probably also see hookworm as well. Uh, if you had hookworm, you'd actually see the worms and you'd see the eggs. Now, if you're only seeing like a little cluster of eggs, you know, um, you don't microwave all your food, right? 
I not 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 generally. No. Generally oh, you're speaking, thinking about I just wouldn't. things like that might have been in like a like a salad wrap or something. Right. Now, if you're eating garden salad, if you're eating grains, if you're eating meats, you are actually going to have eggs that they're infected with go through the system, and then you'd be able to see them. Oh, so these might just be dead eggs that I found then. Mm-hmm. From your food. I mean, a, a food has an enormous quantity of, of animal life in it that we don't actually aware of because it's too small for us to see. It's only when it makes us sick that we get worried. Yeah, you know what? I just found something kind of interesting. Uh, I found it looks like it's a helix. Ah, like a, like a, a helix shape. Yeah, it looks like a helix. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get some higher magnification here. I, I do eat a lot of spirulina. I wonder if ah. if it could be spirulina. Right. One of the things you, want, you might want to not see is a rectangle with a tail on it. That uh, tends to be uh, flagell flagellas, and they tend to be quite bad for your health. But again, you probably have symptoms as well. Okay. What, what, what does a, a, a helix say to you? Anything? I'm sorry, that's beyond my skill base. <laughs> I'd have to look it up. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe I might take some time for it, too. Um, the last thing I just wanted to check with you, because this has been fairly helpful, and I, I guess kind of uh, relieving that, you know, just the fact that there are, there are some things in here, but you were saying a lot of that just passes through your digestive tract anyway. Um, one thing I wanted to talk to you about is, like, what if I were to find something? Let's say that we were in kind of a, a crisis, uh, you know, Maybe I don't have access to medical uh, doctors, technology. W is there anything uh, in terms of you know, preparedness that would be good for people to hold on to if they did get some kind of a parasitic infection? Is there like, any kind of a, you know, medication that uh, will, will help you with a broad range of things? Uh, any of the broad range antibiotics that get excreted by the GI tract are pr pretty good, like the cefaxalins. So again, I'd go with fish antibiotics with this. Uh, you want to do prep, you want to do uh, prevention, of course. You want to cook food thoroughly and be careful with your water sources. Like, don't get it if you can avoid it. Uh, but if you do, you want to use, you want to have an antibiotic on hand. I know a lot of people talk about colloidal silver and various other Hail Mary moves, but honestly, if you get a, an infection. Uh, the GI tract is causing symptoms. You definitely need to be taking oral antibiotics before you, while you can still swallow, and you need to be drinking and hydrating a lot. Okay. Because you've got a microscope, one of the things I'll do is I might put up a video. Uh, there's various ways of actually staining the slides that actually you can do in grid down. It will give you much more of a diagnostic. Like you can use water like you did, or you can use normal saline, or you can use Ligol's uh, iodine. So there's a few things you can do. Uh, and obviously, there's millions and millions of different types of bacteria out there, so it's going to be really hard to diagnose uh, the way we're doing it. But again, without symptoms, I wouldn't worry too much. There was one news story that actually came across my radar just uh, it was yesterday, the day before yesterday. It was a, a new study that was performed down in Massachusetts at WPI, uh, and it was about a... Uh, uh, certain intestinal parasites being uh, highly susceptible to people who drink wormwood tea. There was a study done. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was, I think it was hookworms. Are those are hookworms the ones that go through your feet? Yeah, hookworms. Uh, hookworms are probably one of the ones that would be a problem in SHTF. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was about hookworms, and I, apparently, uh, drinking sweet wormwood tea. The study was finding was more. Uh, effective and a, a quicker treatment than what you know whatever is kind of the standard medical treatment at the moment i, I don't know if they, have you heard about that study or is that I something you're aware it wouldn't of surprise me that's why it's called wormwood i guess well yeah yeah it sounds like maybe that's some knowledge that people had a while ago and maybe we'd forgotten about yeah. it now we're learning it again a lot of the herb a lot of the herb medicines actually work very very effectively well, this has been really informative. Is there anything else that I should be looking for when I, I do this kind of thing? You mentioned, you know, obviously anything that's moving. The, 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 col the color is the main one. Uh, I think for, for most people watching this, if they now decide to go and have actually a look at their pool following this video, if you see fresh blood, you need to go to the doctor, but it's probably not serious. Would the see... blood necessarily be red or sometimes like would it be it darkened? It would be bright red. If you see bright okay. red blood in your feces, it's probably piles. It's probably not that serious, but you should go to the doctor and get it checked out. If you see dark stools, dark red digestive blood, and it smells quite badly, yeah. you absolutely need to go and see the doctor. Yeah, what might that be? 
Uh, that would be blood that's coming probably from a cancer in the upper upper GI tract, or it could be an ulcer. But they're they're less rare, they're less common these days. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, hey, well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate oh, no your, appreciate your expertise. Uh, this has been informative and kind of relieving because I, I I wasn't <laughs> sure if maybe I might have had something, and it's nice that all well, I found is just maybe some well, stuff I'm, that I'm, I'd I'm eaten. I'm glad we've got past this. Well, let's go glad we passed this. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if there's anything else that you would like to learn about this kind of stuff, uh, Hoopals has a great website. Uh, I'm sorry, great YouTube channel. Like I was saying, I'd highly recommend you check out his stuff. He's very level-headed, and he is, um, you know. Just a very knowledgeable guy, especially on all this medical stuff, because that's where he comes from. So, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time, and. Uh, and I, I was trying to come up with some kind of like a clever thing to say at the end. It's kind of like a double entendre with poop, but I don't know. I'll just say the word poop. Poop. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.